My name is Malls. I am a visual arts student at NDSU, and today using my iPad, my Apple Pencil, and Adobe Fresco, we're going to do an animated master study. We're going to be looking at the Mona Lisa today, uh, not for any particular reason, just because I thought she would be a good subject for this sort of observational study. I'm not going to try and replicate it completely. What I'm trying to do is sort of pick up more of the vibe. I want her to be recognizable, but not a direct reproduction, especially because we're going to be making her move in a couple minutes. You definitely don't have to start with a frame. I just like drawing frames when I'm looking at classical works of art, so I decided it would be a good container. Um, I'm working on a 16 by 19 canvas. Um, it's not really a size you print at, but because I know where I'm going to be putting this, the end product is going to go on TikTok. That's the size we're using. Um, I didn't plan this out super heavily. I knew that it was going to be more of a let's look and adjust as we work our way through the study. This is one of the reasons that people do master studies as sort of an observational exercise and a way to learn from people who have painted or drawn things before. I realized after going in with color that I'd gone in too soon and it would be smarter for me to sit and carve out some of the features a little bit more with a one tone of color. I liked the green. I adjusted some proportions here and there, changed the bangs, and now I'm adding in my first sort of mid-tone layer of color. Um, I adjust for size, and now I'm adding in a glaze on top. So this is a technique people use a lot of the time with oil painting, where they make the painting a warm tone, like orange, or sometimes people use green, which isn't that warm, but that's less of the point. And then you add your flesh tones and fabric tones on top of that. It just adds a nice warm background, and sometimes it can help things pop. So I work with that, and now we have a good base for other warm neutral tones. Here I'm adding in some of my introductory level shading and my introductory colors for this fabric. I am doing not the colors from the painting. I tried um, some color picking originally, but I wasn't really liking how it was turning out. I think it's because I'm using such saturated colors for the frame in the background that when I put the original colors in here, it looked off. So what I'm doing instead is I'm picking from the painting and then adjusting with my color wheel, which for some reason did not show up in the recording a lot of the time, but you can see it sometimes. And now that I'm working with these new colors, I'm trying to figure out the type of clothing she has with the levels of contrast in the original painting. Sometimes it's a little difficult to see. Um, so I'm adding in these arm wraps and the shawl. And there are some colors in there that are definitely not on the Mona Lisa. There's not that tangerine orange, but it works in context of the little illustration we're doing here. Um, I'm not heavily rendering this. This is a very painterly loose style. I just want her to be noticeable, but I'm not going to try and do the shading that Da Vinci did on her uh, bodice or anything like that. It's not important to me for this study. Uh, I've paused on her dress here, not because it's done, but because I want to add in the background and then her face before we do the finishing touches. This is a really loose background, sort of following what's in the painting, but also giving her some space, understanding that this is not something that's going to be big. This is going to be seen on a phone screen. So now we're going to get into the animation now that we have this background in. This is called a frame by frame. It's the animation where you draw every frame of the animation. It's silly to say, but my goals for this are to make her blink and to make the Mona Lisa smile. I'm starting with her eyes. That's just the way I always find frame by frames easiest. And how I'm going to make it look like she's blinking is I have her eyeballs in that sort of really pale pinkish color because white would look weird here. And then I'm going to take a more neutral color for her eyelids and create parentheses. That way it looks like they're closing because your eyeballs are orbs. They're almost like a marble. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with the eyelashes 
and I forgot that I didn't want eyebrows here, so you're gonna see me fiddle with those a couple times. They're gonna come off at the end because I really didn't like them. I'm gonna do that same uh, stepping back and forth and adjusting, basing everything off of the marker of those eyelids for the irises. Um, and this kind of is a little bit dizzying when you look at it because of all of the back and forth because this is going to be less than a second of footage. I'm going to loop it, but I have to make sure it still looks believable as I'm doing this blink. Um, and now we're doing the smile. Uh, you're going to see the eyes move at the same time because I'm just setting these all on the same frames. I'm doing this whole thing in a series of nine. And I'm going back and forth, making sure the smile looks believable, making sure I don't have any stray marks as I continue this. And now that I'm comfortable with how the eyes look, I know that I can add some of my finishing touches here. The eyelashes are so dark that I've realized her hair needs a significant amount of contrast. I want to add some more refinement on her face, making sure that I cover up uh, a blemish I'd accidentally put in there. And I'm sharpening some of the features on her dress and arms. On the original, this is a lot more loose, but again, gonna be really small I want to make sure that it's believable and now as I'm doing my final adjustments here I'm keeping the animation looping as I continue checking where I think there needs to be more contrast I've realized that I want a darker line around the frame to show a shadow and that I want some more details on the frame like the frame inside the Louvre it had seemed a little bit plain and these darker outlines make it something I'm happier with I'm going to zoom in and check and make sure I've got the highlights where I want them, smooth some things out, and make sure her face looks right. Making it right does mean removing her eyebrows and making her eye cavity darker for imagined eyebrows, which I'm a big fan of, imagined eyebrows. I'm going to look at this up close, I'm going to look at it far away, and I think I'm getting close to what I'm happy with. I think we're done. So because it was so hard to see, I've looped the animation here on our ending title. Um, this is just one way that you can do a master's study. You don't even have to do it for a medium you're familiar with. I never paint. I haven't oil painted in like five years. But I know that I can still use some of these techniques and bring them into my art I use now. And also it's fun to animate old paintings every once in a while. Um, just to sort of reiterate, this is Da Vinci's Mona Lisa. I used Adobe Fresco on my iPad with an Apple Pencil. Um, in the background, we've had Three of Us by Team Astro going, just a little lo-fi. And here you can find the socials for the university, the Office of Teaching and Learning, and me. Um, in case you want to see other animations I make, or other things the department makes, or other videos for the Office of Teaching and Learning. Thanks for drawing with me, guys. I really appreciate it.